on. The fourth and one? Really? That's what we want to talk about? Well, okay. But you asked for it. Good morning to you. Good Monday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports, and this is Daily Shot of Steelers. It comes your way bright and early every weekday. If you're into hockey and or baseball, I also offer up Daily Shots of Penguins and Pirates where you found this. The Steelers lost to the Las Vegas Raiders. Yeah, that still doesn't roll off the tongue, right? by a score of 26 to 17 in their home opener yesterday at Heinz Field and it wasn't much fun. The offense wasn't any good. The defense lost two more players, TJ Watt and Tyson Alualu. One their best player at any position, the other one for what looks like a very long time. On top of already having been without Joe Hayden and Devin Bush and the whole thing Honestly, it just had a lousy feel. You know, even when the Steelers were behind by a couple of points, there was never that sense that there was in Buffalo, where they started to get things right, and this was going to be another one of those rallies. And yeah, I know there were some moments, the 52-yard pass to Chase Claypool, the first touchdown of Najee Harris's NFL career, and it, it still, it just, it didn't matter. It didn't matter. This this wasn't going anywhere. This wasn't their day. A lot of things went wrong. And yet, not at all, to my surprise, almost everything was placed on the head coach. That's how it goes. That is the state of Steelers Nation after 10 years and only three playoff victories. I get that part. I get that part. He'll get very little credit when they do well, and he will get almost all of the blame when they don't. I actually genuinely swear to you that I get that, even respect it. But when it all came down to fourth and one, and Tomlin's decision to punt from the Pittsburgh 34 with... 8.36 remaining in the game, and the Raiders ahead by a score of 23-14, to you know, I got to kind of put some reality back into this, because I didn't like the call, but I'm also, at least I'd like to think that I am, objective enough to see that it had almost no real impact on the outcome. This portion of Daily Shot of Steelers is brought to you by Point Park University. Choose from nearly 100 career-focused programs leading to bachelor's, master's, and doctoral degrees at Point Park. Choose when and how you'd like to do that studying, whether it's at Point Park's gorgeous downtown Pittsburgh campus, whether it's online, maybe a flexible hybrid format works best for you. Learn more about all of this at pointpark.edu. I'm going to go back through that setup here. It's fourth and one. The Steelers are at their 34-yard line. The scoreboard shows the Raiders up 23-14, to the clock shows 8.36 remaining. So you have a nine-point deficit. You have eight and a half minutes left. You need two scores. Stop right there. Stop right there. If you're going to criticize the head coach in that setting, then you can begin, I think by criticizing him for not trying for two points whenever the Steelers got that touchdown earlier in the quarter from Najee. Instead, they went for the PAT. That put them within two points, which is a strange point to want. And you have an offense, in particular an offensive coordinator, who's got five zillion plays once you get near the goal line, as we saw earlier 
from that really nice inside handoff to Juju Smith-Schuster for a touchdown. Why not go for two there? That's valid criticism. Haven't heard it from hardly any direction. Instead, we're getting to the fourth and one. The Steelers need two scores. So here's what happens. Presley Harvin comes out. Had a great game, by the way. If you're looking for any kind of positives. And he punts the ball 58 yards. Pins the Raiders back at their eight-yard line. The Raiders come out. They get a first down right off the bat, 11-yard run. But then it's one, two, three, and out. And they punt the ball back to the Steelers. So here's what's lost in the equation for the Steelers. They were at their 34 when they punted. They're now at their own 32-yard line following Ray Ray McLeod's 15-yard return of the punt. The clock went from 8.36 when Harvin punted to 5.51 the Steelers' offense came back onto the field. So they lost a total of two yards and a little more than two minutes. But they still had 5.51 on the clock to get two scores. Now, before I go any further here, this is what Tomlin had to say about his decision punt on that fourth and one and whether or not he had entertained going for it. I did, but uh, I felt comfortable with our ability to stop him. I wanted to play the field position game, and um, I think we punted it and stopped him. Okay, so he thought about it, decided against it, went ahead and punted. One more time, the Steelers lost two yards of field position and two minutes and change off the clock. And they didn't have a great drive that followed, but they got what they needed out of it. They got a 56-yard field goal out of Chris Boswell that accounted for one of the two scores that they'd need. And on top of that, they didn't use much time. They took the ball at 551, and Boswell's kick went through the uprights, at 347, like a minute and a half. And they achieved, through that drive, exactly what they would have wanted to achieve had they made it on fourth and one. Whether it was going to be a touchdown or a field goal didn't matter. Whether it was going to happen at the five-minute mark or the 347 mark wasn't going to matter. I don't believe there's any chance they would have had three cracks at scoring drives. I just don't. I just don't. Not the way Derek Carr was moving the ball. Not the way the Steelers had lost half their defense. They weren't going to get three separate cracks at two scoring drives. And as it turns out, sure enough... The Raiders do get the ball back on the kickoff. They start out at their 27-yard line. Carr throws deep for 25 yards. There's another run for 13 yards. They keep going, they keep going, and then there's a field goal. And then the game is over. This was with 24 seconds left. The game was out of reach. There wasn't anything else to it. The punt changed nothing in either direction. I am here to swear to you that there is a long list of stuff that I didn't like about the coaching in this game in general on the Pittsburgh side. But to take the fourth and one and inflate it into something that it very clearly wasn't makes no sense. And don't give me any intangibles, please, about, you know, oh, we need to show that we're this or we're that. You know what? The time to show something, especially as it relates to the running game, 
in the offensive line and whatever else had long since passed. This wasn't the time to make a statement. This was the time to go with whatever was actually happening in the game right in front of your eyes. The Steelers' offense hadn't earned that opportunity. And even that, I'm not saying, is an intangible. The Steelers' defense was half gone. So if the Steelers don't make it, and I'm going to repeat that this was at their own 34-yard line, that fourth and one, if they don't make it, Derek Carr gets the ball, and all he's got to do is get another first down, and the Raiders are up 26-14. to Now they're up 12 points. The Steelers don't just need two scores. They need two touchdowns if they don't make it on that fourth and one. Did anybody actually think this through whenever they got mad about it? I'm going to say this for the millionth time. I totally understand that a lot of this fan base is fed up with this head coach. And I understand why. I really, really do. But man, save it for the stuff that sticks, you know? Because this definitely did not. When we come back, just one question. Welcome back. It's time for Just One Question. That comes on this program always courtesy of the personal injury law firm of Luxembourg, Garbett, Kelly, and George. LGKG, they represent people who are hurt in car accidents, who need assistance with workers' comp, who filed for medical malpractice claims. The attorneys at LGKG have been designated super lawyers, meaning they're among the top 5% of all attorneys in Pennsylvania for over 15 years now. Learn more about them at lgkg.com or by calling 888-842-842. Five four five four. Today's J1Q comes from Jimena Suarez in Mexico City, and she asks, Ben took 10 hits on this game. Do you think the Steelers might ever consider not starting him in a game they think Mason Rudolph could handle so that Ben's body doesn't have to take so much punishment? I don't believe that you'll ever see that with this head coach, not just as it's related to Ben, but to any player. I don't think you're ever going to see Tomlin become gun-shy about using players, whether they're young or old, based on fear of injury. And this kind of swings me back, of course, to the opening segment and the whole, we don't live in our fears, we don't live in our fears, which is what everybody has to bring up every time Tomlin decides to punt on fourth and short or whatever else here. But that really is the approach. Ben signed up for this. Ben's getting paid, even though he took a pay cut, an awful lot of money for this. Ben's going to be out there. Look, what has to happen here isn't worrying about the quarterback getting broken. Uh, He did take some hits. Uh, We asked him about it afterward, and he kind of shrugged it off to an extent. He acknowledged that they happened, and that was about it. What the Steelers need to achieve here when it comes to Ben and the offensive line and the running game and everything else that's really going wrong for this team, that's not the head coach calling for a punt on fourth and one in his own territory, is they have to block better. They just do. They just do. This isn't more complicated than that. There's a reason that I, and I'm guessing you and probably everybody, has been so obsessed with the offensive line all through this offseason, continuing right through OTAs, mini camp, training camp, preseason, and now this. Because nothing works without it. Mason wouldn't work without it, him and those happy feet. He absolutely would not do well behind this offensive line. Najee, we've seen, can be, as advertised, 
dangerous with the football in space. But you got to give him some space. There's got to be something there. This offense has multiple shortcomings. I'm not absolving anybody, including Najee, and by the way, including Matt Canada and including Mike Tomlin. And I'll even save a special mention here for Chase Claypool, who was targeted nine times and caught the ball three times. Yeah, one of them was the 52-yarder, and it looks really good, and he can prance and everything else when it's done. But dude's got to fight for the football, you know? And he doesn't more often than not. You got to fight for the thing. You got to come to it. You got to put your hands around it like it matters to you and squeeze the thing. Even if you get hit, even if it's a cheap shot, as one of them was whenever he tried to catch a ball. But even that, even a clay pool breakthrough, like a lot of us have been hoping for for a while now, even that won't make the difference that a competent, functional NFL offensive line will. And the sooner that all of us get past silly little stuff here, I'm not talking about you, he may not, I'm talking mostly back again about this fourth and one thing, the, the, the sooner that we get past talking about goofy stuff like that, We'll get right back on the real subject at hand. And that is that offensive line. Oh, 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 and also how you're going to replace as many as five, count them, five defensive starters. I don't care that it's the Bengals next week. That's a lot, a lot, a lot of talent to be replacing. Let's, you know, let's talk about the stuff that's real. Real. I appreciate the question, Jimena. I appreciate everybody listening to Daily Shot of Steelers. And we'll, we're going to do this again tomorrow. The sun will come up. I know everybody's upset and disappointed and everything else here, but this was the same team that went up there and did what they did in Buffalo. And they they got beat here. They got beat by a team that, by the way, played pretty well, especially especially car. Let's do it again tomorrow. Mm-hmm.